It's seven o'clock on a Saturday morning. I'm up in search of community. looking right I am looking I mean I'm looking at those heels like come on baby All right and about 30 seconds all right you could have drawn a, a laser level That's across awesome. his heels right and he goes how you, I go, how you doing he goes good man it's good all right it's just all very casual very like how you do missions is that's how you do missions you just jump in yeah. and go for it, see what the heck happens right and then what I realized is that when I had when I was first holding on to his feet, I was so busy, you know, uh, preoccupied with the length thing, right? That I realized that his feet were really jacked up. Like ankle to cockeyed and bent toes. He was just kind of jacked up, right? And then I found, once, once I stopped obsessing over the length of his feet, right? I looked at it and I realized, I said, dude, don't be weird about this, but man, your feet are beautiful. I mean, God had done something. Huh. I mean, they were. It, it was. I looked like I was looking at a statue of David's feet or something like that. It was just like it was beautiful. Just they were just beautiful. God had straightened and whatever he'd done. It was just like. Give him a pedicure. Yeah, gave him a, <laughs> a give him a, a foot cure, man. It was just. It was bizarre. It was wonderful. It was beautiful. All right. It was just like okay. So the point is, that's what you do. Yeah. And then it's come up. It's come up repeatedly. A few weeks ago, I had some gal say. Um, we brought up with a little family, and we just. Um, she said we're here to. She says I'm having. I've had like five surgeries in my eye. I'm losing. I've lost. I'm losing. Lost. And I'm losing sight of my eye. And we have some family prayer. As all these guys will, you know yourself anyway. Will test is sometimes you just jump in, obey. What happens? Sometimes <laughs> the anointing comes and you know. Yeah. Right. You just know it's on you. I've never seen it. I've seen it in the DVDs and stuff. I mean, I've seen sight come back that way. I've never seen it. Yeah. Right. But as soon as she said eyes, I said, cool, let's pray. Let's put my hands on. So I put my thumbs on your eyes. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right. You know, nothing to say. Just Holy Spirit, do your thing. Yeah. Right. Take my hands away. She goes like this because her left eye was the bad one. She looks at her husband and starts to sob. Uh -huh. I can see you better. I can see you. I can I see you. That. Right? And then she said, Oh, I can see you. And then, but, you know, something wrong. I said, No, but, let's do it again. She goes, Okay. Took it down again, covers up her eye again, looks at us again, starts to sob again. So God's storing the side of this eye. And she goes, Oh, it's so da, 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 the peripheral thing is still not right. I'm like, Let's pray again. So good. And I had, a, I had, a, what was kind of weird about the peripheral vision part was that when Ashley was in, um, this is when Ashley was in Berlin with the team. And I had stumbled across something on here I hadn't seen one. You can, with the iPhone, you can send these digital, like you tap the screen and it'll make, it'll make a, like a ring that goes like this and dissolve, you know, like this. Well, as soon as she talked about peripheral vision, I thought, oh, that's interesting because that's a sense I had from Holy Spirit. You just open it up like this yeah. with the peripheral. She prayed again. Right? And I said, this sounded kind of weird. And I just told her what I just told you and said, Holy Spirit, finish whatever you just covered up Ryan. She said, oh my God. That's awesome. Okay. So, yeah. right? We got, a gallon, um, we got a gallon of home group. Uh -huh. Injured, back injured. In fact, she was, she came in she came in with the last round of um, city group, right? And she wasn't even gonna come. Uh, kind of weird, but she came. Found out she had in, she'd gotten a back injured as a teenager in a car wreck. She's late thirties. The same thing. It's like okay. Just stood her up in the middle of the group. Thirty seconds, boom. And, and she'd gotten, she'd gone, it had become for the last four years, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, can't move, how do I even get out of bed, I don't want surgery, it was bad, 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 gone, 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 it's been gone ever since. 
What did that do? It changed your whole dang life. Yeah. You know, um, here, I want to make a point here because I, I, I'm talking about community. Community, um, r true Christian community happens mm -hmm. when you walk out Christian values. It's not just meeting together and talking about the Dodgers. I've been in groups yeah. where I remember um, my, wife, my wife and I went to one home group and we went and we talked about the Beatles and left. And that was okay. I mean, it's okay. To, there's nothing wrong with connecting on that level. But to me, where real Christian community happens is when you meet on a God level. You know, when you connect and there's, when you walk out and live out the Christian values. How did that affect community and relationship when those things happen? It's not just, I mean, it's just like, you can't get that by talking about the Beatles. Nope. Um, and uh, we, don't, we don't look at this there, stuff like... You know, the we've seen more of the miraculous in three years. I mean, I cannot yeah. count. Literally, I yeah. can't count. Right. So now it's just like because you, you said earlier, well, we just get together and do what we believe, and yeah, you know, and that's what I get from you all the time. It's just in yeah. it's natural. It's like breathing. Yeah. And it's like whatever. Lean in. It's you know whatever. And, and you like. catch you catch those things. You could go to a sermon. And, and, and pick up a little bit, but if you're involved in, in a team, in a prayer team, if you're involved in a, in a home group, if you're involved in on, on the level right here, you end up you end up praying for people, you end up walking out the value, you end up connecting over. Uh, there, uh, Oscar, do you know Oscar? Of course. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people know Oscar. Oscar's awesome. Uh, you know Oscar too. Yeah. Um, I was on the prayer team, and he brought this uh, young woman to me. <laughs> And he said, uh, she's, uh, she's got some kind of a brain tumor, she can't hear, and she can't see, and, and, and part of her yeah. face is numb. Yeah. Were you there? I, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so we just prayed for her, and she, uh, she felt like something came out, I think it was her, I think it was her left ear. And she, uh, she felt something come out her ear, like it was like a, like a spirit leaving or something like that. And so we had, you know, we addressed it like, it, uh, and just told it to go. We didn't like make a big deal out of it, that, yeah. you know, that, oh look. Got a demon here, folks, now or anything like that. We just kind of, she felt like something was leaving her ear, so we just kind of just told it to go. But she could see out of her eye and she could hear, and all the pain left. Yes. And I don't know, I wasn't, uh, I don't have a, a, what do you call it, a brain scan or anything like that, so I don't know what happened to the tumor or something like that. But that's pretty major. You pray for something, you see, she can suddenly see, she can suddenly hear, and something leaves. And it's like those kind of, like I'm connected to Oscar. Like the, I'm, I'm connected to Oscar in a way that I, I wouldn't have been before that. And I think uh, ministry, whether it's seeing miracles in prayer, whether it's um, serving people, uh, you get connected uh, and, and, and values get passed on in ways through real Christian community. I mean, I don't, I don't think, you know, I, I think real Christian community is when you walk out the values and those values impact mm -hmm. each other. When we talk about the the what did, Gail and I have found, especially more in the last maybe the last you know, this year anyway, because the Holy Spirit has been so active in the miraculous. It's like you know that's cool, but that's not the point, right? as we all know, right? Because it's. Just as I was pulling up here in the parking lot this morning, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I was just pulling up here this morning, right? And because you're talking about community, you know, we, we don't, it's, it's community around what we have in common. It's not community around what we believe. Yeah. It's, it's simple. It's community around who, what we, who it, we believe. And who we believe, yeah. I mean, it's it's ultimately that's good it's a we have community because not that we share a belief I mean we certainly do right but the community is centered around who again it sounds pretty obvious but who we believe in yeah right? it really really is because whether it's hey like Zach pulls up alongside you guys and says hey we're yeah. with you well he says something simply is take a chill it's all good or somebody gets healed or gets included in the group whatever that whatever okay it simply it's Holy Spirit giving a turn of the face of Jesus to an individual yeah, because he 
he is what we have in common. Uh, there, there was nobody Jesus depended on on earth for his relationship with God. So that's why I think a lot of kind of what Jesus culture is kind of teaching is, hey, you know, we don't want to do programs, we don't want to do this because your relationship with God is your relationship with God. What you learn from Him and leak out on people, that's community. And that's reality. That's reality. So Jesus walked through the earth full he committed to God. Everything he did was to help others know who God was. Not know who he was, but who God was. And that's what we're supposed to do. And obviously, him in the middle of the equation, you know, we, we share who the Holy Spirit is, who Jesus is, and who God is. You know, the, the Godhead together. But it's, it's all about that. And if we're not doing that, we're really not doing community. So we're talking about the Beatles only yeah. To get oh, more. only to get a connection this way, mm -hmm. so you can talk about the other things deeper. Yeah, I um, turn this around here. I uh, when I connect to, when I connect on a Jesus level, there's there's a depth that I don't get any other way, and I'm just like I'm ruined. I can't just go. Um, I, I can't just go and talk about. You know, let's go talk about cars. I mean, th that's good. I mean, it's like, and and there should be groups that that uh, that you know that, that maybe meet around cars or doing those kinds of things because community happens around this. I don't 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 take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, but there's there's nothing when you connect on a Jesus level, when you see the Holy Spirit move, when you see blind eyes open, deaf ears open, when you when you see marriages like we were just talking about your marriage, when you see that changed, when you see people come into relationship with God. That's the kind of thing that uh, it's like. That's that's like eternity. It's not just life changing. It's eternity changing. Um, um, so we were, you know, my wife and I were, um, you know, we're a blended family. So it was the second marriages for both of us. So we brought a lot of baggage to the marriage and not going through marriage 101. I skipped that course somewhere in my lifetime. So I, uh, for us, it was really difficult to figure out marriage on our own. Mm -hmm. um, and you know the churches that we've been all of them were uh, were good. They you know encouraged us, but no, they didn't really have any tools per se. So when we got uh, when we went to the lab after marriage, five day intensive, the Holy Spirit got involved, and that's where things changed. Is where the power of God started coming in, and the Holy Spirit revealed things in our lives that were affecting me and why I was treating my wife the way I was treating her because things that happened in my past that I'd never taken care of. Unforgiveness, uh, there have been uh, molestation, things like that in my life that affected me to the point where um, I wouldn't know why I treated my wife the way I did, but it just came out of me. Yeah, it was just, just natural, you just did it. It's just something I knew, it was familiar with. Yeah. So I had to allow Holy Spirit to show me and, and dig that stuff out and then allow God to heal me of that and repent of some things, unforgiveness, and just allow God to heal me of those things so I can go on. You know, it's just like if we don't get healing in certain areas of our life, we can't move past it because it's always got a hold on our life. And so for us, seeing what God did in our own marriage and my own, you know, that's where our heart is. It's we want to see marriages because we know that there's a lot of things in our own marriage, a lot of major things that we tried to destroy our marriage, but God, this whole thing, God kept us together, and through it now, we, um, there's things that, you know, there's not a whole lot of people come to us and say, hey, you know, he did that, or she did that, or like, well, we went through that already, and God, you know, God has healed us, so it is possible. You have to be willing to allow God to work in your life. You have to see your spouse in a different light, the way God sees them, and not the way we see them through our natural eyes. And so, and that, that, that healing, that healing has to come. A lot of that healing that's happened in your life has happened through connection yes. with God and connection with the community and God's people. So it's, it's connecting with Him, letting yep. Him do everything in it, yeah. yielding to Him, letting Him come into your life and do all the things that you need to be done.
done. Yeah. But also walking out, you mentioned Zach or some of the other people, Love After Marriage crew that you've been involved with. It's, yeah. it's, it's, a lot of that's happened through the community. It's not just going to a big meeting. Right. And, and, and you know, we're not we're not perfect. And so we, we continue, you know, we continue to strive towards perfection. But we still made mistakes. And when things happen, the, the important thing about community is you find somebody to come alongside you and help you do that. And say, hey, I'm with you and lock arms with you. And they're going to pray for you. They're going to encourage you. They're going to stand with you. And that's the whole thing about community where it really has drawn us to Jesus culture. Is there's people that stand here. I mean, I'm, I'm surrounded by guys right here that will stand with us, stand with me, in any situation I believe. And that's what encourages me to, to keep going. This is a good word for this kind of stuff. The answer is unfamiliar. Spin on it.